what to do when a student's a pain? Well, that topic's well-trodden terrain. But the question of how you can further endow a good kid? Well, that's also germane. I'm Heidi Marks Morris, and I started teaching high school in 1995. Despite nominal retirement in 2015, I've been in the classroom ever since. I'm writing a book about what I've learned in my career because I want to help others experience the connections and joy that I have found in successful teaching. It's called Teaching Matters, and you can sign up for news of it at my website, MarksTeachingMatters.com. As we've welcomed students back into our classrooms and had in-person instruction again for the first time in more than a year, I've begun to reflect quite a bit on the dynamics that happen with student-to-student -student interaction and how that can feed or diminish the teacher's role. I want to talk today about good students and good kids and what each of them can contribute or detract from a classroom and present teachers with the opportunity and some ideas of how to encourage and shape the contribution of those two types of kids. I am much more familiar with the good student from personal experience. I was a student to the core as I went through my K-12 education. I cared very deeply about earning every point, getting every test question right, being the best student in each of my classes. I remember specifically several different parent-teacher conferences where teachers would say things to my mom like, Heidi is a good student, but I really wish she would participate more in class. And I clearly remember my smoldering resentment at their implication that I should be somehow shouldering their responsibility. Very clearly I saw in my mind that it was the teacher's job to teach the class and the student's job to absorb that teaching, not to participate, heavens forbid. I was terrified of the attention of my peers. I did not want to draw any attention to myself. And the suggestion that I was somehow expected or obligated to do just that in my pursuit of my education was anathema to me. Now, I didn't articulate that to any of my teachers, but oh, do I remember thinking that. Now that I am a teacher and I look out into my classroom and I see some of those good students, I have to smile wryly that my expectation is that they will participate in class and not sit there silently and invisibly while I try to carry on my task of teaching. No, my perspective is very different as a teacher. A good student sees very clearly his or her goal, which is their individual academic education. They want points, they want grades, they want to know the right answers, they want clarity, and sometimes they want to beat their other like-minded good students in competitions for best test score or most points earned or whatever the academic endeavor may be. Those can be very healthy and productive atmospheres to foster in a class, but they also have a dark side, especially in classes that are not filled with good students. In a nutshell, the good students in their single-minded crusade to succeed 
completely obscure the average and sub-average students who are not on a like-minded mission and whose goals may be just getting by, slipping through, making it from day to day, just don't rouse any attention from the teacher. And there are a lot of those students, students who do not, for whatever reason, want to wave their hand in the air to answer questions, who are more than happy to let Jane and John know it all, broadcast their intellect for everyone, and the other kids just sit back. It is really easy as a teacher to only see the kids with their hands in the air. And that is to the detriment of everyone. That is something I learned gradually and ruefully as I moved through my first several years of teaching experience. It is a far more important skill for a teacher to learn to temper the enthusiasm to participate of those waving their hands in the air kids and be able to encourage other students to take the risk to speak up. You want a class where everyone is choosing to trust and choosing to work. And when you've only got one or two or three good students claiming all the accolades, claiming all the knowledge, that trust and that universal effort are both difficult to achieve. Now I want to contrast that image of the good student with the good kid. I have come to appreciate the good kid more and more and more the further I have gone in my teaching career. The good kid does not see points in the grade book as the sole purpose of existence or attention in a class. They happen to notice that there are dozens of other humans in the room, some of whom might look depressed or seem excited or have something to say. And the good kid chooses to interact with the teacher, with classmates, with what's going on around them. They are willing to laugh at the teacher's jokes. They're willing to roll their eyes at inane behavior when the teacher, of course, can't do that. They're willing to lend a pencil to the kid beside them who isn't prepared and probably should be. They push their chair in. They say thank you at the end of a lesson. And they may or may not earn top grades in the grade book. But those good kids are invaluable to a good classroom. Again, every teacher's job is to teach every kid, or rather, to encourage and motivate every student to learn. That means the kids have to be willing to put in effort and to trust that their efforts will be supported, that their growth will be valued, that it's not just the top few kids who are always right who deserve accolades. There are lots of routes to achieving that, but the most basic is to engage every kid multiple times every period. Call them by name and give them a chance to answer. A simple question, a simple bit of feedback, make them aware that you see them, that you value them, and that you praise their growth just as much as the top students with the top grades. Teaching is not just about having kids earn points. It isn't about that at all. It is about fostering a community where everyone chooses to put forth effort. 
students who come into my classroom with that attitude already a part of their nature are my heroes and their parents are as well. To have fostered a love of humanity, a courtesy, an enthusiasm that I could never inculcate on my own, but which I can, with practice, spread throughout the rest of the class to make all of us enthusiastic participants in the learning process? Yes. Praising good students is important. Very often the top students often are not the ones who receive the special notes home because every teacher assumes, oh, everyone is already praising that student. They deserve praise, but so do all of their classmates and not empty praise. Praise that comes from the teacher's heart through efforts of the student that are truly valued. I am so grateful for the good students in my class and their willingness to work with me and to, I hope, temper their pursuit of the great grade. But oh, I am enormously grateful for the good kids who greet me when they come in the room who engage in a little pre-class conversation, who help me set a model of respect and cheerfulness and camaraderie that other students can emulate when they don't have it within them inherently to present those behaviors. Bad kids, oh, there's stacks and stacks and stacks of advice about what to do about the bad kids. I've only met a very few bad kids in my career, but the good kids and the average kids who can be nurtured into being good kids deserve a lot more of our praise and attention and scholarly directed teacher behavior to bring their best to the forefront.